just cast Ana de Armas in everything. Everything. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. There were multiple new Netflix originals that dropped today, but first we are talking Sergio. Were you excited for this film? Get down in that comment section and let me know. And let's get right into it. So in Sergio, we have a sweeping drama set in the chaotic aftermath of the U.S. invasion of Iraq where the life of top U.N. diplomat Sergio hangs in the balance during the most treacherous mission of his career. So the real life Sergio is a fascinating individual. Just looking into what he represents, I was uh, I was in awe. And you look at Greg Barker as a director who directed the documentary based on his life, I believe in 2009. Obviously, he's just as fascinated as we are, so he tackled this film. He got a really good cast and a good overarching narrative. Now, Normally, when we get a film like this dealing with the political landscape and politics, I I'm hesitant uh, because some directors tend to shoehorn things in there, put them at the forefront to where it compromises the actual story. But I was so interested in Sergio, I was actually excited for this film. And then you look at the cast and Ana de Armas, obviously. You also have Bradley Whitford, which at first I was like, is that Bradley Whitford? Because he was kind of covered up, but he looked great. He was great in the film. And then Wagner Mora who genuinely delivers a great performance. I've seen some reviews where, ah, he wasn't all that good in the movie. I'm like, ah, I thought he was really good in the movie. I thought he fit perfectly. Uh, but what this film focuses on way more so than I was anticipating is the relationship between these main two characters, and we flesh out that particular relationship almost as much as we do Sergio's life, what he accomplished within the UN, uh, and the fascinating story that I think wasn't a as explored as maybe I wanted it to be, but I was actually kind of happy with the romance that we were getting. Where this film falters, in my opinion, is something that I wasn't necessarily expecting, but something I see and I'm like, okay, it makes sense, is the overall execution. Because while the narrative is interesting and you get a really big emotional gut punch at the end. This story culminates in such a way that I believe uh, makes the entire experience better because we start out with this film and we find out that our title character is actually trapped underneath a building that had just exploded. So it is one of those movies that starts out in a certain point in his life uh, and because we are here we have to flash back to here, here, and here. And that idea is interesting in nature and I do like seeing him at his weakest while also seeing him at his strongest, at his best, and at his uh, most likable, because this really is a likable guy. Sergio is an interesting individual, and living the life of a UN diplomat is obviously going to have its challenges, and I believe those are showcased in an interesting enough way. Now, at times, the movie slows down almost to a halt, but you have all of these different storylines happening at different points in the film, and it's not chronological, which adds a bit of flair in there, I understand, but at a point, it became too much for me. This is a movie that falters way more so with its execution than it does with its actual story, with its narrative, because I thought that aspect of the movie worked, and like I said, when you get into that third act, and you finally get to the culmination of that relationship, and you're with these characters for so long, you kind of build a rapport with them, and you're rooting for them. That worked for me. So I don't think this movie is bad by any means, but I also just don't think it came together in the end as they wanted to. A lot of the times on Netflix, I watch these movies, I'm like, that's, that's a travesty that destroyed my hopes and dreams. It's just a horrible film. I don't feel that way about Sergio. I like the attempt here, but because of the structure, because of the way that this film is told, I found fault in that. And I found so much fault in that that I couldn't really enjoy the overarching experience at the end of the day, if that makes a lot of sense. And I don't want to come off as, oh, well, he's being a film critic and he's overlooking. I'm not trying to do that. I just feel as if this movie could have been told in a more cohesive way, in a better way, in a way that made you feel even more so attached to these characters. When we get to those final moments at the end, and we are rooting for multiple characters throughout this film, I do appreciate and respect the fact that they didn't lean uh, too far into being heavy-handed. I think the moment showcasing the political struggle could have been told a bit more impactful, uh, maybe on the level that the relationship was showcased in the movie, that would have been nice. So. 
Overall, I was slightly disappointed by Sergio, but I do have appreciation for certain things about the film that I just wasn't expecting. So, bit of a back and forth with me. Thank you guys for watching this video. And like I said, if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more Netflix reviews, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. But as for this film, I'm going a 52% for Sergio. Over that halfway point, I think the performance has kind of put it over the top. And Ana de Armas, like I said, put her in everything uh, because... Even with a smaller role, maybe a bigger role than I anticipated, but a smaller role, obviously, than Wagner Mora, uh, she is fantastic. So, you guys are the best. I appreciate you for watching. Many more reviews coming. I'll see you soon.